This afternoon, we're scrutinizing the agreement and we bring you all the reactions. First, here are the details. The documents cited by Johnny show that negotiations with the U.S. has been ongoing at least for the past eight months. Cabinet approved the deal on Thursday, 8th March 2018. According to the agreement, Ghana will provide unimpeded access to and use of agreed facilities and areas to the U.S. forces and contractors. It also allows U.S. forces and their contractors to undertake construction activities on and make alterations and improvements to agreed facilities and areas. The U.S. forces are also authorized to control entry to the facilities meant for the exclusive use of their forces. Ghana has also agreed to, quote, furnish without rental or similar cost to the United States all agreed facilities and areas, including those jointly used by the United States forces and Ghana. According to the agreement seen by John News, the United States forces shall not be liable to pay any tax or similar charge assessed within Ghana. It also states that, quote, United States contractors shall not be liable to pay tax or similar charges assessed within Ghana in connection with this agreement, end of quote. The U.S. forces may also import into and export out of and use in Ghana any personal property, equipment, supplies, materials, technology, training or services in connection with the agreement. But most importantly, such importation, exportation and use shall be exempt from any inspection, license or other restrictions, customs duties, taxes or any other charges assessed within Ghana. The agreement also states that, quote, aircraft, vehicles and vessels operated by or at the time exclusively for the United States forces may enter, exit and move freely within the territory and territorial waters of Ghana. Such aircraft, vehicles and vessels shall also not be subject to the payment of landing, parking or port fees. Cabinet also agreed that no Ghanaian official shall board and inspect any of these U.S. aircraft, vehicles and vessels without the consent of the U.S. forces. The U.S. forces can also use Ghana's radio spectrum free of charge. Ghana has also agreed to accept as valid without a driving test or fee driving licenses or permits issued by the appropriate U.S. authorities to military personnel as well as U.S. civilians and contractors. John Hughes has also intercepted a memo written by Defence Minister Dominic Nittewell asking Parliament to ratify the deal. In the memo, he explains that Ghana will benefit from the deal because it also involves the facilitation of training, including maintaining unit readiness, continued exercises and other military opportunities for the Ghana Armed Forces. Mr. Nittewell also argues that the deal will ensure that there is enhanced fruitful security cooperation between Ghana and the USA. Parliament will have to weigh the options and make a decision.